Since starting my online business in 2014, I've run the gamut of email marketing software for free and paid options as well. In the last five to six years, I've had four different email marketing platforms. So let's tear into a MailerLite review. Once you build a significant email list, email marketing platforms get expensive really quick. They usually set their prices based on how many subscribers you have. While building a large list can be beneficial, it can also be draining in this respect. I don't think a lot of people realize that someone is paying for your email to be on their list, even though it's free to you. It makes it insane to think about some of the trash people send to their lists as well. And that's a whole other video altogether. I've used the following four email marketing platforms, and that's GetResponse, MailChimp, SendFox, and MailerLite. I'll be talking from my experience on these platforms. Now let's consider some of the best features for email marketing for self-publishers. Most of the major email marketing software has a standard set of features like an autoresponder. Now, this is a tool that sends out an autoresponse when someone signs up for your list or performs some other call to action. Now, then there's the automations. This is similar to an autoresponder, but it allows you to set up a drip campaign and add other elements to your series. Also, form builders. Most platforms have a simple WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get editor to create forms for embedding on your website. Some even have a pop-up creator or can embed on a Facebook page. Of course, there's landing pages, another WYSIWYG tool that allows you to build landing pages for your books and or other products. This can also allow you to start building a list before you have or without a website altogether. Also, email templates. Most platforms have some kind of email templates for you to use. More often than not, these are yet another WYSIWYG editor that allows you to build and save your own templates on top of having some prefab templates too. These are really the bare minimum and you'll need most of these if you plan to do email marketing as a self-publisher. So let's consider the email marketing software that's free. Pretty much every platform will have a free trial period where you're able to try out the services and see what features are available before you purchase. If you're new to email marketing, this is great, but if you have an established list, moving that around can be a bit of a pain. If you're like me, you may have multiple lists, automations, and autoresponders you need to move as well. This isn't something you want to do unless you're planning to stay somewhere for a while. Having four different email marketing platforms in less than five years certainly wasn't my plan for sure. There are two email marketing software for free in my list here. Now, I consider MailChimp, which is free for up to 2,000 subscribers. And then there's also MailerLite, which is free up to 1,000 subscribers. Now, before you start to tune out, less is more. I'll tell you more. Stay tuned. This is amazing because it allows you to build a list before you have to start paying. So you have an opportunity to generate revenue long enough before you have to invest. As authors and self-publishers, you know that's huge. We're always watching that bottom line, right? Here's why I changed my email marketing platform so many times. With GiveResponse and MailChimp, I was simply looking for something more cost-effective and a lot less clunky. Worthy of note, MailChimp was recently acquired by Intuit, and in my experience, when a corporation gets a hold of something, they almost always ruin it or run it into the ground. I've experienced this with web hosting too. Not to mention, MailChimp's user interface is anything but intuitive. So when I moved to SendFox, I did so because I got a lifetime deal, and I really felt like it was an up-and-coming platform. I love a good underdog. I couldn't have been more wrong. Sure, it was up and coming, and I think some people have found great success with it, especially in the paid newsletter realm, but it was terrible for email marketing as a self-publisher. It lacked basic features like emojis, and the scheduler was always sending out at the wrong time. It has this weird feature where it would only send your email to the most active of your subscribers. There was no documentation on what criteria they used to determine these most active subscribers. So you could send out an email to your list of 3,500, but only 2,500 might actually receive it. It was some sort of automated optimization. So if you contacted support to be removed, your next email might land you right back in the same situation. They couldn't seem to explain this whole thing. They called it best practices. They auto purged inactive subscribers, which seems like a good thing on one hand, but on the other, you don't get the opportunity to re-engage these inactive subs because you can't even get an email out to them. Then came the clincher. They actually asked me to back out of the lifetime deal because of the number of emails they sent was too much of a strain on their system. 
<laughs> I'm not making it up. After months of frustration trying to make it work, my assistant and I gladly left SendFox behind. All right, so I was offered two options when I was switching, MailerLite or ConvertKit. That was the subject of my email to my assistant Ava at the time about which email marketing platform we should try next. She's handled all four moves for me and used a number of platforms both for herself and other clients, so I knew she was a good one to ask. Now, ConvertKit was one, and it was kind of a next-level platform for email marketing. It has a lot of features and slick-looking forms. A ton of marketers use it and swear by it, but it's a bit pricey. I'm not averse to paying for a good service, and I'm positive I would have been happy with ConvertKit, but did I really need all of that? Now, Ava didn't seem to think so, and since she's the one using it the most, I respect her views greatly. And as self-publishers, I think it's important for us to keep things simple whenever possible. ConvertKit is for the people who put a lot of emphasis on email marketing, as in, it's probably more than 50% of their business. Now, that's not the case for me, and probably not for you either. So we went with MailerLite and haven't looked back since. So the MailerLite move was stellar. As I said, I have multiple lists, landing pages, more than that, it just needed to be moved from SendFox to MailerLite. MailerLite was super intuitive that my assistant had the majority of my stuff moved in about two hours. Now, here are the details of what was moved. It was eight separate email lists, three forms on the website had to be updated to MailerLite forms, so these had to be created and then the code pasted in the pages and widgets on my website. There was also four automations. This entails multiple email series and drip campaigns. Now, my assistant's first impressions were, everything was intuitive. Obviously, the move thus far had only taken two hours, and even though they call things different names in some cases, she had no trouble figuring out what went where. Easy for me to say, right? And when I was stuck on how to add lists, I Googled it and I found a video created by MailerLite that told me exactly what I needed to do without any fluff or BS. Now, they've got a super clean interface. It's fast, there's no loading or lagging issues. This was a problem with SendFox. It was like a spinny, 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 spinny for five seconds or so, and probably people are gonna just tune out after a while. I love it so far. It is leaps and bounds above SendFox. So let's discuss the MailerLite features. Here's how MailerLite's features stack up. Let's start with the campaigns. Now, these are emails you send out to your list on a regular basis. They are normally just a one-off or weekly recurring email that you create manually. You create new campaigns from this tab as well, and they show you as sent, draft, and outbox. Now, there's three different editors. MailerLite offers three different options for editing your email campaigns, drag and drop editor, rich text editor, and custom HTML editor. You can save templates on all three. Now, the next feature is A-B split testing. You, you can split test your campaigns and landing pages if you have a paid premium account. It is a nice feature because then you can start to play around with different types of subject lines or different types of content or links out. Of course, there's subscribers. You can view your list at any time and filter your view using 12 different parameters. From this tab, you can also manage your subscribers in a number of different ways, including but not limited to adding new subscribers, purging inactive subscribers, organizing subs into groups, and much more. Now, also there's the forms. You can create embedded forms or pop-ups from this tab. Now, the sites. This is what MailerLite calls landing pages. They have a number of templates available, including ones exclusively for authors. I find these are a little more than I need, so I usually create a lander on my website and embed a plain form instead. Now, the automation. This is where you create all of your autoresponders and automated email series. Of course, the analytics, this is simply MailerLite displays stats on every page. You can easily see how many people have opened your campaign or how many clicks you received. And on the subscribers tab, you can see who's opening your emails. If you click on a specific subscriber, you can see what emails they opened when and what links they clicked and so on. It drills it down for you really nicely. If you click view report on any of your sent campaigns, you can view detailed stats and MailerLite will even show you a heat map if you're a premium user. MailerLite has literally everything you need as a self-publisher to master your email marketing, and the best part is that you can get started with this email marketing software for free.
The one caveat with MailerLite is that you must have a completed website to get your account approved. You'll need a domain email as well. They have a link you can click if you don't have a website that allows you to send them a form email, but they may not approve you and having your website squared away is just easier. You're going to need it for your effective email marketing anyway, so you might as well just get it out the way. Now, using email marketing software for free to leverage Amazon's traffic. Let's talk about it. If you don't wanna deal with that right now, you can start building your list without a website using email marketing software for free at MailChimp. You can always move later. I've done it four times, so I'm not judging. The important thing here is to get that link to your signup form inside of your books. Make sure it's in the first 10% of your book so it shows in the look inside feature on Amazon. You won't get a ton of signups that way probably, but this is how you leverage traffic from Amazon even if they don't purchase your books. Here's my final thoughts on MailerLite. Now, the pros, it's super intuitive. MailerLite is simple to use and that's it. And it's also got detailed analytics, amazing price. I love that you can get started for free. So how much is it once you exceed a thousand subscribers? It's about 10 bucks a month. You get up to 5,000 subscribers. It's about 15 bucks per month. I'm gonna leave a link inside the description down below to where you can actually get that pricing information. Another pro includes the great editor and template interface. And it allows me to create professional emails and newsletters in a snap. Now the cons, you get a 14 day trial of all the premium features when you sign up, even under the free account. I love to see that extended to have the paywall just be subscriber count. No dedicated analytics. There's no place to see all your stats in one spot. The main dashboard tab has a general overview, but to drill it down, you have to skip all over the place. I don't really mind this, but I think some people would prefer to have stats to be more concise. And I really had to dig to think of anything I don't like about MailerLite. It has been an absolute godsend. Ava and I went from weekly wrestling back and forth with SendFox to never discussing the email platform or even having to contact support, which is awesome. It gets five stars from me, two banana stickers for turning a headache into happiness for my team and myself. I cannot recommend MailerLite enough. If you're using MailerLite, what's your take on it? Anything that you would change? Is it working well for you and your business? I'd love to hear from you inside the comments down below. And speaking of email marketing, believe it or not, I did a full tutorial live on the air where I discussed how to start out in email marketing for free. Go ahead and take a look at it in this very next video. I'll see you there.